Hello, everyone. My name is Levi, and the Paralympic sport that I chose to research was goalball. So looking back into the history of the sport, um, it was made by Austrian Hans Lorenzen and German Sepp Rindl in 1946, and they collaborated in making this sport in order to help veterans with visual impairment issues to rehabilitate after World War II. As the game grew and evolved, rules were formulated so that it could be played at a Paris sport in international competitions. Um, it was first included by the International Blind Sports Federation in the Toronto Paralympics of 1976. And ever since then, um, it's grown and it's become one of the most popular sports for blind competitors. And it's competitively played in 112 countries around the world. The rules of the sport, so there's three players on each side defending a goal. Um, one team will have an opportunity to throw the ball underhand at the opposition team's net. And if they score, it counts as a, a goal. 12 minute halves, so 24 minute games in total. All players have masks on and ensuring that nobody's cheating. Um, players have to save the ball fully lying down. And there's fouls, so a foul can include traveling with the ball when they're serving, if they take too many steps and also making contact with an opponent. And when a foul is called, there will be a free throw where an attacker has a chance to score while one, only one defender is defending their goal. The equipment being used, you have your goal ball. This is about the size of a basketball, a bit heavier, and the, there's bells inside the ball so that the athletes know exactly where it is on the court and when they have to make a play. The two goals are nine meters long, one meter wide. The goals are placed on opposite sides of the, um, the court. And there's three players are in front of them. Every, every player has eye masks and eye tape. Um, these are just to make sure nobody's cheating. As I said before, there's court markings on the floor. And the markings are made out of a tactile material so that the players know exactly where they are on the court. And they also... Um, they have some meaning as a center line, which the players can may not pass. And there's also a, a line that represents where the ball must be thrown. It has to bounce before that line. Um, there's safety paddings that are put onto the nets. You can't see it in this one. In the next slide, you can see it a bit better. Um, and that's just to make sure that the players don't get injured and they don't run into the pools. Um, you can see the, the padding on this one a bit better. It's a higher level competition. So scoring, I said, a points awarded when the ball crosses the opponent's goal line. In the case of a tied score at the end of regulation, um, the game will go into a three minute golden goal period. Golden goal meaning the first team to score wins. Um, the first team will have an attempt to score and then if they score, the second team has, an, has a chance. If the second team misses, they, they will end up losing. It's like soccer penalty, sort of. Um, if the game's still scoreless after the three minutes, the game will end in a draw. Simple as that. The classification system the athletes are put into and specified as are B1, B2, B3. B1 being the most visually impaired athletes and B3 being the least visually impaired. B1 athletes, um, there's a reference on Special Olympics um, website that B1 will have no ability to see in either of their eyes. B2 having a bit more ability, but still very little and B3 having the least, but the uh, impairment levels really don't matter as every every player has a mask on anyways. The Paralympic athlete that I chose to research was Zach Buller. Uh, Zach Buller is one of the youngest players on the USA national team. And he was only, he's only been on the team since the 2020 games. He was born with a condition called Stickler syndrome, which breaks down the connective tissue in the body. For him, it began with torn detached retinas and then developed into other complications such as glaucoma. And he was first introduced to uh, a ball in 2015 in a camp in his hometown of Indiana. He's participated in uh, other sports, Paralympic sports such as beat baseball. He's on a four-time championship winning team, Indy Thunder, and they've won four times in the past five years. And that's been a, a lot of the reason he's been a lot of the reason that of their success um, but yeah he first came to their team um usa team 
Tokyo 2020 Paralympic team, and they finished fourth, which is very impressive. He's dual, his dual athletic ability represents his strength and um, his actual talent. So he brings a lot to the team. So I chose to uh, research goalball because it was something, a sport that I didn't have any prior knowledge to coming into this class. So I wanted to get to learn more about the players, the teams, and also just like the programs that how they how they function and everything that goes into that. And I, I thought that when we played in class, it was a very interesting sport. And I thought there might be some interesting tactics that I could learn. It was definitely um, an interesting thing to learn about. Um, I chose to research Zach Buller because he was accessible on social media accounts. I was um, trying to reach out to him and get to contact him to learn more about the sport. I have not gotten a response back, but I'm looking forward to seeing if he does get back to me. Some of the information I did learn while researching football can be implemented in my future and current jobs as I observe developing adapted sports programs. Um, I want to be able to set up programs and I think learning how exactly the game functions is very important. I'm also spreading awareness on Paralympic, the Paralympics and those who participate is very important. I'm getting to learn more about just all the different sports in general. These are the references I used. Thank you all for coming and watching. I hope you all have a good day. Peace.